Hello, everyone. This is the CircuitPython weekly meeting for October 21st, 2024. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. My name is Tim, and I am sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. Uh, CircuitPython is a version of Python that's designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers, and the development of CircuitPython is primarily sponsored by Adafruit. So if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware over at adafruit.com. This meeting gets hosted on the Adafruit Discord server, which you can join anytime at adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the hashtag CircuitPythonDev text channel, as well as the CircuitPython voice channel. Uh, the meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. U.S. Pacific Time, except when that coincides with the U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there is a link to a calendar which you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send out uh, notifications about the upcoming meeting via Discord. If you'd like to receive those notifications, just ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas uh, Discord role. Um, the, there is a uh, shared notes document that accompanies the meeting and recording. You can contribute to that document beforehand. The final notes doc will include timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use that document to skip around and view the parts of the video that interest you most. Depending on how many folks are around for that week, the meeting tends to run 30 to 60 minutes. Each meeting, uh, after each meeting, we'll post a link to the next meeting's notes document over in that CircuitPython dev channel on Discord. You can always check the pinned messages in that channel throughout the week to find the uh, notes doc for the upcoming meeting, and you can always add uh, items to that uh, throughout the week as well. You don't have to wait until uh, Mondays. If you happen to think of something earlier in the week, feel free to put those in. Um, a little bit about the meeting structure. So the meeting is uh, going to be held in five parts. The first part is community news. That's a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a chosen set of items grabbed from the Python on microcontrollers newsletter. The second part is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. That one is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers separate from our status updates. The third part, and the first of our two round robins, is the Hug Reports section. Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing. You can take a moment to recognize the awesome folks in our community. Uh, the fourth part is Status Updates. That is uh, our other round robin section. So during Status Updates, it's an opportunity to report on what you've been up to, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing in the past week since the last meeting, and what you'll be up to over the next week. Uh, and that leaves us with the fifth and final part, which is in the weeds. That one is an opportunity for more long-form discussions. Those can either be topics that come out of status updates, or they can be identified ahead of time as too long for status updates and uh, more appropriate for in the weeds. So if you have got an in the weeds topic that you'd like us to discuss, feel free to scroll all the way down uh, in the notes doc and add that, uh, add your name and then just a brief bit about what you want to talk about. So that covers how the meeting will go. So uh, with that, we will get into community news after I take the first timestamp. There we are. Uh, so this is the community news uh, section. Let me get scrolled to the right spot. My apologies. Uh, so these news items and more are available in the weekly uh, Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, which goes out via email on Monday mornings. Uh, visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to that newsletter. Thanks to Anne, as always, for putting the newsletter together. Uh, if you've got Python on hardware projects to share, uh, or you find content that you'd like to see included, please consider contributing to the newsletter. You can open a PR over on GitHub, uh, or you can email that to uh, cpnews at adafruit.com with a uh, link there. So the items this week, I will timestamp this one. We've got MicroPython uh, v.1.24 is nearly there. So MicroPython uh, version 1.24 is getting very close to release. Two out of three milestones have been completed uh, to date with a major pull request for the RP2350 support being merged this past week. There is still a preview release available for those who wish to check things out. And there are links here to that preview release as well as the GitHub milestones. Uh, next up, we've got uh, control the Lego interface B with Python. Um, and this one just says, use Python and MicroPython to control the Lego interface B and 9-volt uh, Lego Technic components. There's a link here out to Hackster.io. This one caught my eye because these uh, components and the way they connect were the same ones used on a very early version of the Lego Mindstorms, which was 
uh, one of the first uh, personal experiences I had with programming in electronics. So I thought that was really cool. Um, next up, we have uh, Python 3.14 Alpha 1 is released with early changes. It was just last week that Python 3.13 saw its official release with many great features from a new interactive interpreter to an experimental uh, JIT um, and removing the global interpreter lock uh, in the experimental free threaded build mode. Python 3.14 Alpha 1 is now out in the very early stage development. Uh, yeah, now out in the very early stage of development uh, milestone towards next year's big Python update. Uh, there are links here to Foronix and the PSF Python Software Foundation with more information about that. Uh, next up in the last one of the news items I grabbed for today is the this PyDOS uh, handheld, which was one of the items from uh, new bits added to Adafruit Playground over the week. This is a PyDOS uh, handheld that uses CircuitPython and RP2350, uh, and I thought this was just a really neat uh, implementation, this uh, little handheld sort of BlackBerry-type device. Uh, I've always found this kind of form factor pretty neat, so uh, that looks like a neat project. Check that out. Uh, as well as many other uh, fascinating and interesting things in this week's newsletter. So I think I told you a bit about it uh, before, um, but just to reiterate, all these items did come from the Python, for, uh, Python on Microcontrollers weekly newsletter, which is a CircuitPython community-run newsletter that gets sent out on Mondays. The complete archives, you can find those anytime you want at adafruitdaily.com. Uh, this newsletter focuses, uh, highlights the latest on Python on hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython. Uh, and again, we uh, love it when folks contribute items, so if you happen to see something as you're cruising around the internet throughout the week and you think it would be a great fit for the newsletter, please feel free to send that in. Again, cpnews at adafruit.com, uh, open a PR, or tag that item. Uh, with CircuitPython on Mastodon Blue Sky or X. So next up, we will talk about the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. Uh, this section is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from our status updates. We'll talk about the project overall and then separately discuss the core, the libraries, and Blinka. So first up, I will tell you about the overall stats for this week. Uh, this week we had 27 pull requests merged, uh, which seems like quite a bit, so that's great to see. Uh, we had 16 different authors, which again, uh, seems like a lot of authors, so that's also really cool to see. There were a, a handful of names in here that were newer or perhaps less frequent or just less familiar to my eye, so uh, these folks might be newer or less frequent contributors, so we wanted to uh, just call out uh, those names and give a special thanks to them. Uh, this week, those names are uh, KT Knit, um, Arturo182, uh, Ashawn Watson, uh, let's see, Dog Ush C, and uh, D. Cooper Dally Rimple. Uh, so thanks to those folks, as well as all of the other names, which again are a little bit more familiar to my eye, folks who might be uh, contributing more frequently. Um, and then we had five reviewers this week. So thanks uh, to our reviewers, Dan, uh, Dan uh, Scott, Deshipu, Jeff, and myself. And overall, we had 13 issues closed by eight people with uh, 10 new issues opened up by nine people. Uh, and it does still list here the, the Hacktoberfest is on zero issues, but those are actually assigned at the repo level now. So all of the issues uh, and all of the PRs across all of our repos, which have that tag, should count for Hacktoberfest. Um, so with that, I will send it over to Scott if you're available and would like to tell us about the core. I'd love to. Thanks, to Thanks Tim. Uh, so for numbers for the core, we had 12 pull requests merged from 10 different authors. So... Uh, Arturo 182, Bablock B, Sean Watson, Hindi Bing, Dogush C, W. Tamura, and Gumbo 21 are all infrequent folks, so thank you to all of them. We have three, re three reviewers, Dan, myself, and Jeff. Uh, we have 21 open poll requests, so we're comfortably un under the goal of 25, which is the number that GitHub fits, fits on a single page. Um, we have six closed issues by three people and four open by four people, so we're in it down two. For a total of 743 open issues. Uh, this number does grow slightly over time. 
Um, and the prioritization for Adafruit folks is uh, kind of documented publicly through the milestone system. Um, so we have no open issues on 9.1x, which is good. That's our current stable release. We have one open issue for 9.2.0, which is our soon, 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 hopefully next stable release. And then we have 13 open issues for 10.0. Um, so those are kind of like our top priorities. We do also have 41 open issues on 9xx, so like kind of shorter term things. Um, but it, those ones are kind of like in between land. <laughs> uh, some of those get moved and some of those get long term. So uh, that's where we're at with issues in the core. All right. Thank you, Scott. Next up, I will tell you about the libraries. So this section covers all of the CircuitPython libraries, uh, all of which can be found on GitHub under names like Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then the name of whatever library it is. Uh, so across all of those libraries this week, we had 15 pull requests merged by eight different authors. Um, and I will add the name uh, I missed from above, uh, Yan No, um, submitted PR this week for some new examples, so thanks to them. And uh, a couple of the other names I read before, as well as uh, all of our more um, frequent authors, so thanks to all of those folks. Uh, we had four reviewers this week, so thanks to them. Um, of the pull requests merged, the oldest one was 30 days, and then the uh, several of the uh, newest ones were down at one day this week. Um, that leaves us after the week with 44 pull requests open for libraries. The oldest one of those is a draft at 795 days. Newest one is one day. Um, over the last week, we had six issues closed by five people with four new issues opened up by three people. Um, let's see, we have uh, 888 open issues uh, now following the week. And of those, there are 96 of them that are labeled good first issues, uh, which you can find listed out over at circuitpython.org slash contributing, which is a website where you should head if you are interested in getting involved in CircuitPython. Over at that page, again, that's circuitpython.org slash contributing, you will find a list of open PRs and open issues. Um, it's a great place to start if you uh, want to get involved in CircuitPython. So the place where we usually point folks first is that list of open issues, uh, excuse me, the list of open PRs, I should say, rather. Um, you can take a look through the list, find something that you either have got the hardware for or that you've got an interest in, uh, click through, and that's going to take you to GitHub to the PR uh, page for that open PR, where you can then see the changes that are being proposed. Uh, go ahead and take a look over those. You can um, review the code for spelling, syntax, um, logic, anything like that. Um, if you do have the hardware, go ahead and give it a try on the hardware and then leave a comment there on GitHub letting us know how it went and what you found when you looked it over. If you do that a couple of times and you want to uh, get leveled up to leave official reviews on GitHub, we can help you with that process as well. Um, if you are interested in getting your hands dirty with some code, you can click on over at circuitpython.org slash contributing uh, to the issues tab. And what you'll find listed out there uh, is a big list of open issues, um, which again, you can click through the links and it'll take you over to the GitHub issue page this time. Um, and so the same kind of deal applies there. If you're wanting to get involved, you can take a look through the list of issues, find something that you've got the hardware for or that you've got some interest in working on click through to GitHub, figure out what the issue is, if it's a fixing a bug or adding a new feature uh, or adding a new example or what have you, uh, and then go ahead and make an attempt at implementing whatever it's asking for, submit your own uh, pull request with that change. We do have guides uh, for contributing to CircuitPython and the libraries using Git and GitHub. Um, so if you would like to do this, but you feel like uh, you need help with that part of the process, no worries. Uh, we can point you in the right direction there. We also have folks who are around throughout the week on Discord who are willing to help you get spun up. So uh, we really want everyone to be able to contribute no matter what your background or skill set is. And we've got folks who are willing to help out with any part that you uh, need help on. Um, I will tell you next about the PyPy weekly download stats for the week on libraries. Um, we do, we are uh, increasing the, the PyPy download still steadily, so we're actually up to like 1.9 uh, million PyPy downloads across the 336 libraries. We're not sure if that's uh, something related to tooling or if we're just getting um, much more downloads going on, but yeah, steadily, steadily rising there still. Uh, the top 10 list is here in the notes doc if you'd like to take a look at those. Uh, it is mostly the usual 
um, suspects that tend to appear in this list uh, over the weeks, although they do have a bit higher numbers for the last few weeks. Uh, and then new libraries in the last seven days, there is a TM1814, which is a, uh, I believe an RGB LED driver. And there is also the anchored tile grid uh, library, which was added this week. Uh, and there are a couple updates here, which you can see in the notes doc if you are interested in those. Uh, and then with that, I will uh, pass it over to Dan, who has volunteered to tell us about Blinka this week. All right, thank you. Um... So since Melissa is out, I just want to explain, um, Blinka is our compatibility layer for CircuitPython on single board computers like Raspberry Pi. Now they're sort of mostly small Linux computers. Uh, so in the past uh, week, there weren't any pull requests merged. Um, there are six open pull requests, most of which have been open for a while. Um, there are 111 open issues. There were 75,716 Pi, Pi downloads in the last week. Um, the number of supported boards is 146, um, which uh, so things are uh, stable in, in Blinka right now because uh, Melissa is out on leave at the moment. I, and one thing about these downloads, I wonder if we're that's not an instance count but a byte count or something. <laughs> we can check on it. All right, yeah. that's it. All right. Yep, thank you, Dan. Uh, so next up, we will get into the Hug Reports section. So let me tell you about that. Uh, Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start, and then we can go down the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. If you're text only or missing the meeting, then I'll read your notes when we get to them in the list. So I will take a timestamp and kick us off. Uh, this week, I have got Hug Reports. Thanks to Retired Wizard for looking into an issue um, where some types of PNG images were getting skewed and distorted by the image load library and submitting a fix for that, uh, to Deshipu for looking into that same issue and reviewing the uh, fix, to uh, JP this week for trying out my spirit board project and offering some great feedback, uh, some ideas to improve that, and then lastly for me to Jeff uh, for reviewing some changes to the screenshot utility. So up next is Dan, and uh, after that is Jeff. So we'll hear from Dan. Okay, uh, thanks to Scott for all the work he's been doing on Circuit Matter and for the discussions. I've had several discussions with him about it in preparation for when he'll be um, out on paternity leave. And thanks to you, um, Tim, for taking on new responsibilities, including uh, keeping CircuitPython.org updated. Okay. All right, thanks, Dan. Uh, next up is Jeff, and then we will hear from Scott after that. So I will pass it to Jeff. Hello. First, I have a hug for you. It's nice to see you picking up more time on the CircuitPython stuff. It really feels, if, when I come back and look at Discord, like you've been doing a bunch of stuff, and that's really exciting to see. Uh, Scott, best wishes for you and your family. We'll keep the lights on for when you come back. You have some experience. You know this community will be here and sustain things. And finally, I've been seeing some posts from Deshapu over on Mastodon lately, and I really enjoy seeing those. So please post more and stay in touch. All right, thank you, Jeff. And rounding out hug reports, we will hear from Scott. Hello, uh, one hug to Ludovic uh, L. Bu, who I, I think I said a hug report before, but thought it was an I, but it's actually an L. Um, they've been testing and refining circuit matter. For example, they added temperature sensor support and actually got it running on a Raspberry Pi before I did. So thanks to them. Nice, thank you, Scott. All right, so next up is the status updates section. I'll take a timestamp and tell you about that. Status updates is our time to tell folks what we've been up to individually. I'll start, then we'll go through the list alphabetically. When I call on you, you can take a couple minutes, tell us what you've been doing since the last uh, meeting and what you'll be up to in the next week until the next meeting. This is also a good opportunity to provide tips and tricks that are relevant to what folks are working on. Uh, and if a discussion becomes too long for status updates, we can always bounce it down to in the weeds and discuss it a bit more in depth later on. So status updates for me this week. Let me take a timestamp. Uh, I learned the process for submitting new devices to circuitpython.org and went on a bit of a spree submitting all of the, uh, the unknown ones that were in the system currently. 
Um, over the weekend, I worked on the remaining shape intersection functions that I've been kind of doing off and on uh, a bit in the background here. Uh, and I am down to just a single function left to implement, uh, although I do need to go back and do some cleanup uh, as well, because there was some refactoring that uh, I did without actually erasing the old parts. Um, and then uh, the other thing that I kind of set up over this past weekend was um, this Matrix Portal Spooky Eyes project, which is on Learn. I've got a link in here if anyone's interested in that. Uh, it was made originally, I think, for the original Matrix Portal, but I am running it on the S3, uh, which I think has got quite a bit more RAM. And so I was able to actually update that project to cycle through all the different eyes. There's, I think, four or five uh, that look really great. I should say Hug Report to Phil B as well for this project, honestly. It's super cool. Um, but there are a handful of different eyes you can choose from, and in the original project, you need to make your choice and hard code it. Uh, but I have uh, updated it to let you cycle through with the buttons, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so next up, we will hear from Dan, and uh, Jeff is after that. Okay, so as uh, we've mentioned, Scott mentioned, there's uh, 920, 920 we hope is imminent. There's one issue currently there, and I'm checking to see whether it's really a showstopper or not. Um, so anyway, when that's done, we can do a release candidate zero. And um, then maybe soon after that, do the app 920 stable release. Um, and I had made a few PRs, which most, I think all of which were now merged uh, as of this morning. So um, I'm also getting set up for while Scott's out to work on circuit matter. Um, I needed a device with a thread border router. Thread is um, a, a way, is a, is a non Wi-Fi uh, but radio protocol for doing stuff. And uh, you need these things called border routers to be able to uh, route thread packets and also route thread packets to Wi-Fi and so, or to, the, to your local area network. So after talking to Scott about this, um, it turns out there's a company called Eve, and I put a link in that lists a whole bunch of devices, including whether they have border routers and stuff. And uh, that is um, listed in the, in the notes. And I decided to get an Apple TV device because I have already have too many smart speaker kind of devices. Um, so now I have a, at least one device with an actual border router, and now the other devices can do matter through the border router. They're all sort of matter capable, but not. They don't speak the thread protocol directly. So we'll see what happens with those. I got it to control a light bulb, but not circuit matter. That was just using the standard apps. OK, that's it. All right, thanks, Stan. Uh, next up is Jeff. Hi again. So last week, I created the CircuitPython Monophonic Audio FX program and wrote a guide about it. This program is intended to allow easy migration from Adafruit's VS1000-based Audio FX board. Then I finally had the LED strips show up that I ordered a couple of weeks ago that have the TM1814 chip on them. Um, so I created a library and added that to the bundle. There, uh, just before the meeting, I opened a pull request with some enhancements. After that is in, I will write up a short guide about how to use them. Uh, they do have a problem that makes me kind of hate them. Uh, whenever your code is not running and clocking out that NeoPixel-ish data, uh, they flash an annoying test pattern. There's nothing you can do about it besides turn off the power. Um, and I don't have a way to do that. So every time I reload my code, it like flashes every LED brightest red at me. Um, another thing about this particular product, this was an eBay LED strip, and it has one TM1814 controller for every three LED packages. So like there's three RGB W LEDs, and then there's one chip. And those three LED packages will always change together. The uh, library treats them as, quote, one pixel. Uh, that's just a... That'll just be unexpected if this is common among these products. Uh, anyway, but they're awfully bright and they run off of 12 volts. Um, and I hope I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out a project to do in my house with these because now I've got 10 meters of this stuff. Anyway, past LEDs, it will be back to work on Arduino code for the Flopsy board. And then the last thing I want to share is I wrote some really cursed code over the weekend that lets you. Um, access a large language model when you're building your pipe when you're building a C program just by using hashtag include. 
Um, and actually, it will also write Python programs. So you can just pretend that there was a Python program on your file system called LLM slash Python 4 slash program to print the square root of its command line arguments and call it with some arguments. And this, this thing that I wrote calls out to an LLM to get the contents of this file and then returns it to you. So it's really terrible and cursed and no one should use it, but I had a blast writing it and wanted to share. So that's what I got this week. All right, nice. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, and uh, rounding out the status updates, we'll hear from Scott. Hello, thanks for all of the work, Jeff. That sounds really fun. Um, I'm about to have a baby. I know I've been saying this for a while, but uh, due date is a week from today. So this is likely my last week of work. I might get trunk rated. It might be that I'm like kind of here next Monday, but I'm probably not. Um, I'm, my plan is to take four weeks off initially. So uh, from the time the baby's born. So probably next week and the three weeks after that. Um, although I will keep folks posted when the baby does arrive. Um, until then, I'm, I've just kind of been like trying to do a little bit more on circuit matter, but not pick up anything too big. Um, I should also say that I'm, I'm trying to wean myself from doing a lot of reviews of PRs and stuff to try to kind of like not just drop the ball when I'm gone, but, but kind of like let other people pick those things up. Um, so let me know if you want me to review something, and I'm going to try to be better about that this week in particular. Um, I get a lot of emails and I respond to a lot of stuff that I get emailed about, but I'm going to try, not, try to, to ramp that down this week. Uh, in terms of circuit matter, I got state saving and restoring working, so you can commission it once and then it'll start up as if it's been commissioned, which is really nice. Um, turned out that was a great foundation for me weaning the code off of the certificates that I was getting out of the test uh, repo. So it should be, uh, circuit matter should generate everything it needs to start up. So if the state file is missing, it generates the, the data used for the QR code to commission. It generates um, a couple certificates for that as well. Um, there's now a kind of common hard-coded intermediate certificate that uh, circuit matter brings along with itself so that we can kind of like correlate all the certificates that way which is good. Um, yeah, and it, the nice thing is, is that it's now kind of like you just run it, it creates the file it needs, and it goes, which is cool. Um, I got it packaged on PyPI with uh, correct dependencies. Knock on wood, correct. Um, and I'm working on getting it working on the Py0 TW. Uh, I was working on that during my deep dive on Friday. It turns out um, Ludovic, who I was talking about earlier, actually got it working over the weekend. They found one issue with the, the sample code that I had written uh, with Blinka. So I'm excited to start there. And then I also want to do NeoPixel and RGB W lights uh, based on that as well. Um, I should say that it's not like super stable. It's not going to, you're not going to be to the point where you want to use it in a device yet. Um, and there's a few issues that I filed uh, under the circuit wrap circuit matter repo here and I just added a, a 1.0 milestone with the things that I think like for example we construct an object for each exchange that we're doing but we never delete them <laughs> we just like per I just perpetually append them to a dictionary or a list I can't even remember uh, which means you'll just like leak memory over time um, or use more and more memory over time so uh, there's some some things are kind of like that that we really do need to do before uh, we consider using it projects in projects on single board computers. And then of course, uh, the, the nicest thing will be getting it on CircuitPython, which is a, a bigger task that uh, Dan will pick up at some point too. So uh, that's where I'm at on circuit matter. I'm just gonna pick off small things um, because I don't know when I'm gonna be out. All right, thank you, Scott. And that is it for status updates. Uh, we do not currently have any topics for In the Weeds, which would be a place for us to dive a bit deeper if there were any topics that needed a more long-form discussion, uh, but we don't, uh, don't have anything this week for that, so I will take us right on through to the wrap-up. So this, uh, let me scroll to the right spot, there we go. This has been the CircuitPython Weekly Meeting for October 21st to, uh, yeah, October 21st, 2024. 
Um, thanks to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. This video, uh, the video, the, excuse me, the video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be made available on major podcast services. It will also get featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, which you can visit adafruitdaily.com in order to subscribe to that. The next meeting will be at the normal time, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific time on Monday. That'll be October 28th next week. Um, the meeting, as always, is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join at adafru.it slash discord. If you would like to get notified in the event that there were going to be a change to uh, the date or time of the upcoming meetings, you could ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role over there on Discord. We send out pings to that role when it does change. Uh, so that's all for this week. Thanks to everyone, and we hope to see you all next week.